Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander Score Studio. Welcome to the show. So, on today's episode, I've got a very exciting deck tech for you. I don't know why I'm doing this with my hands, but I'm just that excited, I guess. <laughs> Regardless, on today's episode, I've got a secret commander deck tech for you. Now, I mean, it's not really like a secret, like I'm obviously sharing this with you, but it's like a secret commander, one that is hidden in the deck, and your opponents don't know that this is your actual commander that you care about. <sighs> I mean, you care about your actual commander too, but yeah, you have a secret commander in the deck that you're trying to get out, essentially, and that can definitely win you the game in a very, very spicy way, and and I guess uh, it is going to be a secret from your opponents. They will not know what you are doing as long as you don't be like, hey, just saw this episode from Mitch the other day. Let me send you the link. I'm going to buy this deck and play it, because then your opponent's sub. Uh, probably would know what is going on so uh yeah you might want to keep it a secret uh but if you're in, if you're gonna end up uh, getting the deck so here we go first up the uh the actual commander for the deck the legal commander for this deck is Sharum the hegemon a fantastic commander in her own right a five five legend artifact creature sphinx that is flying that costs three white blue black when Sharum enters the battlefield and may return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield a fantastic etb a reanimation for artifacts on ETB. That is a incredible. There are some broken things that you can do with this. We're not going to be doing those broken things. This isn't like clone and stuff like that. Yeah, this is not... The, the point of this deck is not infinite loops with this. The point of this deck is to get out our secret commander. And that's what we're going to be focusing on. And uh, our commander can definitely help out with that too. Shroom the Hedgemon can, you know, get our secret commander out of our graveyard because maybe our secret commander might be an artifact. We'll talk about that here in, a, in just a little bit. But yeah. With this deck and with my other deck decks, I'm going to take you through, well, tactics to show you how this deck works and how we're going to win with it. Every single card in this deck outside of the secret commander is less than $1. Yeah, I made an exception for the secret commander. Regardless, the entire deck is very budget friendly. And according to Moxfield, currently the deck's price is $28.62. So again, very budget friendly. And yeah, if you are interested in this deck, Make sure you check out that deck list link in the description below. And again, if you are trying to surprise your friends with this kind of a secret commander, you don't want them to know about it, well, uh, maybe don't, you know, be like, hey, Mitch came out with an episode. It's about this one secret commander, which is, well, let's jump into it with tactic number one. And tactic number one is going to be the golden pig of this deck, which of course is the number one card out of 99. Sorry, wait for his bottle. I had to put this first because we got to talk about this because the golden pig is... Elbrus the Binding Blade. That's right. This is our secret commander, a piece of equipment that has a secret of its own. A ledger artifact equipment that costs seven mana. A massive equipment. This is a very expensive little blade. Equip creature gets plus one plus zero. Okay. So uh, seven mana for uh, a plus one plus zero. Okay, well, it only costs one to equip, uh, but yeah, there are, um, well, there's a zero mana artifact, I believe, <laughs> that actually costs the, uh, does the exact same thing. That being said, what it doesn't do is this. When an equipped creature deals combination to a player, unattach Elbrus the Binding Blade, then transform it. So this has a secret of its own. Again, you just got to get it through, and of course, uh, your commander does have flying, which is usually enough to get through on at least one opponent. So, and of course, we've got other ways to get through too. But yeah, basically, hey, hit an opponent with this, and all of a sudden, it flips over, and you've got Withingar Unbound. Oh my goodness. Okay, first off, the art on this is incredible. Oh my goodness. Just the size, the vastness of this demon that is just disgustingly awesome is so cool. 13-13. Uh, Flying Intimidate Trample Demon. <gasps> Flampling intimidation. Uh, how, do, how do you put that together? Like flin trample intimidate. No, anyways, uh, flample and intimidation. So intimidate means basically right. It can't be blocked except by a creature that shares a color with it. So black or an artifact creature. So this can get through usually, or it can just get through a trample anyways. Uh, and yeah, on top of that, because being a 13-13 flampling intimidate demon isn't enough. Whenever a player loses the game, you get 13 counters on this. Okay, so, uh, hey, uh, your opponents, um, well, uh, they're not gonna stand much of a chance as soon as, well, 
this gets out there starts hitting them and once one gets taken out they're really not going to stand any kind of a chance and you can very easily turn this into well a two shot ko and a one shot ko quite quickly now keep in mind that this is your secret commander it is not dealing commander damage unfortunately or yeah just with one opponent getting taken out and this being a 26 26 that would be a one shot ko that being said we still have ways to essentially make it into a one shot ko as well yeah whipping guard bound is a really really cool card and one that I have always wanted to build a deck around. And I finally, well, find the found the time to do it. So here we go. Secret Commander with a Gar Unbound. Let's go. Now, uh, we can't just, you know, hope that we happen to get this in our hand and play it. And that'd be great, right? It'd be great. But uh, we've got some ways, of course, to ensure that we're going to do that. But first up, we need to talk about, well, tactic number two. Which is going to be where we start our engines. Because, well... We need to get things going. And of course, first up, there's Wayfarer's Bobble. I'm so sorry, Wayfarer's Bobble, for putting you in the second tactic and not the first one. I'm very sorry. But I still said first up. Oh, okay, first up in this tactic. Is that okay? Okay, anyways, pay two tap, sacrifice, go get a base land to play tap. Fantastic card. Next up, a very flexible mana rock. Everflowing Chalice, pay two mana into it, tap for one, pay four mana into it, tap for two. It's a great card, regardless of the situation. Next up, we've got Arcane Signet, taps for any of our colors for two mana. Fantastic. And of course, we're going to be running our other signets like Azorius and Demir. And I was hoping the next signet would be an order on this, but it is not. But regardless, these signets are pay one into them and tap them for the guild's colors. So yeah, very good at filtering our mana. Next up, we've got Felwar, so which can tap for all our colors. Most of the time, depending on what our lands, you know, our opponents have, essentially. Or, yeah, basically, whatever their lands are. Usually, it can tap for our colors. If not, it can tap for most of them. Next up, we got Mindstone. This one doesn't tap for any of our colors, but we can pay one to tap and sacrifice to dig deeper into our deck, which is great. Next up, we've got Orzhov Satan. See, there's the, all of our Satan. There we go. <laughs> Moving on, though, we've got Talisman of Dominance and Talisman of Hierarchy. These are the two budget talismans i think the only other one that isn't talisman or isn't talisman that isn't budget uh within these colors is the uh blue white one unfortunately regardless these are great tap for colors tap for one of two colors and deal one damage to us again we are in a uh, commander we have 40 life that's a lot of life to give next up we got coalition relic very efficient very effective card you can tap for one made of any color so that's basically say manolith which is not that efficient but we can tap put a charge counter on it and then basically next turn we can essentially have two mana with this so again a great way to store up mana and utilize it when we need to moving on we've got midnight clock this one is not very efficient but it can help us out in a different way basically it gets our counters on it once it gets that 12 it gets exiled and then we basically time twister we get to you know shuffle our hand in our graveyard into our library draw seven so this can really help us out if we need some extra card advantage essentially next up we've got sky slate sky clay relic we got there <laughs> kicker three indestructible under battlefield if it was kicked we get two tap tokens that are copies of it it can tap for one bit of any color so it can be a good low to the ground uh you know mana rock early if we need to or you know it can be one that we can essentially get more mana out of later speaking of which we've got hedron archive this taps for two as well uh tap for two colors pay two tap sacrifice draw two cards for four mana efficient and effective and then at the top of it all dreamstone he'd run six mana tap for three three tap sacrifice draw three so yeah we got a lot of ways to get a lot of mana because hey the quicker we get things going the quicker we can get that binding blade out but to actually get it out of course we need to get it into our hand or into our graveyards let's move on to tactic number three which i'm calling tutor time because it's time to tutor get it so first up we've got open the armory a great card for just two mana hey go get an aura which we're not going to be doing or an equipment which our secret commander is again the front side is an equipment thank you so go get it for two mana get it in your hand get it out have fun hit your opponents flip it over and demolish their faces next up we've got treasure mage this one is a great tutor on a creature a 2-2 human wizard that enters the battlefield search life for an artifact card converting mana cost six or greater again we are utilizing our you know high mana value secret commander to our advantage seven is what elbris costs so there you go go get it next up anchor to reality this one might be one of the best ones because hey um what you're gonna do is you're gonna sacrifice an artifact or a creature very easy for us to do we can do that that's even just a mana rock great okay search live for an equipment or vehicle card put on the battlefield and shuffle uh it's not gonna be a vehicle if that's uh mana value uh you know has sacrifice permanent is to but uh, we can scry too if the uh, mana value is less than sacrifice permanent mana value that doesn't matter what matters is essentially hey um sacrifice again just simply a mana rock go get your binding blade into play right away so yeah, this just gets it right in the battlefield moving on dead eye quartermaster similar to treasure mage in a way enters the battlefield go search for for an equipment card great 
Next up, Diabolic Tutor, just a very standard, hey, go get whatever tutor. And then we've got Auric Lore Mage. This works in a different way for us. Tap, search for a card, put in your graveyard, then shuffle. This is a repeatable way to get things into our graveyard in a way to, again, set ourselves up with our commander's ETB. Again, get that Binding Blade into your graveyard, have your commander ETB, get it directly into play. Then maybe attach to your commander and smack some in the face later. So yeah, have fun with that. Moving on, Violent Tumor. This is basically the exact same thing, but just on an ETB. So we're getting it once instead of a repeatable way. That being said, it can be more effective in certain situations. And a 2-2 with Death Touch, what's not, like, what's not to love about that? Then we've got Grave Breaker Lamia. This one works in a somewhat different way, but basically the exact same thing. Hey, uh, ETB, go get something, put in your graveyard. Also, a spell you cast from your graveyard cost wants to cast. That could come in handy with certain situations. But yeah, mostly again, tutoring for our graveyard is the important part here. Moving on, Alicia Shipment. Uh, casually three so we can sacrifice a creature power three or greater to do this again search library card put in your hand and then shuffle there are going to be times where maybe we get some good artifacts into our graveyard and then we you know utilize our commander to get them out and then we want to be able to utilize our commander's etb again we can sacrifice our commander to get it back to command zone to ensure that we can do that uh, again next up razcast right tutor for something or cycle it away and then we've got Thalia's Lancers, ETB, Search for Library, a legendary card, reveal upon your hand, then shuffle. This is a really good one for Secret Commander decks because a lot of Secret Commanders are legendary. And yeah, our Binding Blade is legendary. So yeah, there you go. It doesn't specify legendary creature, just legendary card. So that is nice. Finally, we've got Disciples of Gix. They look quite evil. <laughs> when they enter the battlefield, search for the three artifact cards, put them into your graveyard, then shuffle. So basically, hey... Go get the Binding Blade and whatever other two artifacts that you might want to be able to cheat out with your commander into your graveyard, have your commander ETB, get the Binding Blade directly into play. So again, yeah, a lot of great ways for us to tutor. And again, either in our hand, directly into play, or in our graveyard, a lot of great options for us when it comes to getting out our secret commander. But of course, we're not done just yet. So let's move on to tactic number four, which I'm calling I Can Dig It. I, that was at the... What movie was that? Someone in the comments below, let, let me know. Was it, was, it, um, was it the Warriors? Can you dig it? Anyways, uh, Occult Epiphany. Instant for X in a blue. Draw X cards and discard X cards. Create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying for each card type. Among cards, discard this way. So we can make a little army with this, which is nice, but also just helps us dig deeper into our deck to try to get to the cards that we need. And again, if we hit the Binding Blade and we can, you know, get our commander into play, then hey, just discard that Binding Blade into your graveyard. Get it out into play with your commander. Speaking of which, read the runes. Draw X cards. For each card drawn this way, discard a cardless check by, say, permanent. Basically, again, a lot of situations where we're like, okay, I'll just dig deeper, discard some cards. If I want to keep extras, so I can sacrifice permanents. Or, you know, there might be some permanents that you actually want to sacrifice and, yeah, want in your graveyard. Moving on, key to the city. This one is fantastic. Tap, discard a card up to one target creature can be blocked this turn. So first up, yeah, if we've got the Binding Blade in our hand, we can utilize this to discard it and get it into our graveyard for our commander. Or if we've already got the Binding Blade in play attached to something, hey, we make that creature unblockable so we ensure that it's getting through. Or, you know, we can make sure that Withengar is getting through as well once it's flipped. And on top of that, when this comes untapped, we can pay two if we do draw a card. So kind of like a delayed, uh, like, rummaging effect too, which is very nice. Speaking of rummaging, well, on the other end of things, we've got Looting with Looter Ilkor. 1-1 one, one Shadow that has, 1-1 one, one with Shadow that has, whenever it deals damage to an opponent, draw a card and discard a card. Shadow basically is unblockable because uh, unless our opponents have a Shadow creature, they're not going to be able to block it. This also can't block anything except for Shadow creatures, but that's fine. Regardless, hey, when this hits, we loot. So again, you can get things in your graveyard that you need, like the Binding Blade. And also, again, if you have the Binding Blade in play, this is a great thing to attach it to because you're like... This is unblockable. Good luck, opponents, until they're like, I've got Dothy Voidwalker. It has Shadow 2. Good for you. I'm going to swing at that other player that doesn't have Dothy Voidwalker. Moving on, we've got Bolt for tomorrow. Instant for X, blue, blue. Draw X cards and this card, A card. Yeah, just a great, incredibly efficient draw spell. Again, instant speed. And hey, discard the one card, probably the Binding Blade, to get it in your graveyard if you need to. Moving on, a free, basically looting effect, essentially free. Uh, frantic Search, draw two, discard two, untap the three lands. So yeah, again, this one actually, they bounce land could net you mana, which is really nice. And also on top of that, again, just a free looting effect, draw two, discard two, dig deeper in your deck, get that Binding Blade in your graveyard if you need to. Moving on, Chemistry's Insight, draw two cards, jumpstart, so we can recast this from our graveyard by discarding a card issue to its cost. Yeah, a great way to essentially say, yeah, I'll dig deeper. Yeah, I'll dig deeper. Oh, cool, yeah. Uh, on my second one, I'm actually going to discard, you know, the Binding Blade in my graveyard so I can get it there for my commander, if that's what you want to do. Moving on, Forgotten Creation. A great, repeatable way 
to just dig down deeper into your attack. Skulk, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may discard all the cards in your hand if you do draw that many cards. Now, Skulk is actually pretty funny with this too because it's a three power creature. So it says this creature can't be a block by creatures with greater power. So essentially, hey, if players only have big creatures, uh, yeah, you can get this through. You put Binding Blade on it. It does give the plus one plus zero, which is technically, you know, not good for this. <laughs> but uh, hey, uh, if your opponent doesn't have any creatures that are four or lower, you're like, I'm just going to get through. Okay, cool. So yeah, that can come in handy, but yeah, just a great way to dig down into your deck. Whispering Madness, another great way to do so, in a repeatable way at that. Each player discards their hand, then draws cards to go to the grace, and cards player discards its way. Basically, Windfall, but also a Cypher, so you can encode it on a creature. And again, you've got some evasive creatures, including your commander, so that when your commander or whatever else this is, you know, ciphered onto hits, you get to do it again. So yeah, a great way to dig down. And then finally, we've got Dream Trawler, a great card in a deck like this. 3-5 Flying Lifelink. Whenever you draw a card, it gets plus 1-0 until end of turn, so this can really benefit from things like Wheels and whatnot, Forgotten Creation. On top of that, whenever it attacks, draw a card. Nice card advantage there. And we can also discard a card, and it's going to gain Hexproof until end of turn, tap it. So, again, this is a way to basically be a draw engine. It can hit pretty hard. It can gain us life. It can get through. And on top of that, it can be a discard outlet for us. If we want to discard that Binding Blade into our graveyard, we can. Next up, though, let's talk about some ways to make Withengar hit even harder. I guess any of our creatures hit even harder. But yeah, let's go on to Double Trouble, which is tactic number five. And now, now I'm thinking about, you know, um, what is it? Uh, Team Rocket. Prepare for trouble. Make it double. Did anyone ever have that, like, Pokemon, uh, like, uh, soundtrack? One of my buddies had that when I was a kid, and we played that thing on loop. Anyways, <laughs> Paladin Class is uh, an enchantment class. So I'm slightly thrown off by that. It only costs one mana. Spells your opponent's cast during your turn costs one more to cast. So it's a great way to kind of protect your things a little bit. It's kind of like Ward 1 during your turn, kind of, essentially. Uh, or, I mean, even better than that, technically, is your opponent's counts. Anything, then it's going to cost more. Level 2 is going to be creature control at plus minus 1. So a good Anthem there. And then most importantly, level 3, whenever you attack until I turn target attacking, target attacking creature gets plus minus 1. For each other attacking creature gains double strike. So this can make Withengar hit incredibly hard. And yeah, I mean, double strike can just be a great way to finish your opponents off in like one shot. Again, if an opponent gets taken out, Withengar gets 13 counters on it. And then if you have double strike for your commander, for your commander, for your seeker commander, right? It's going to be hitting for, well, it gets plus plus one at least uh, for, is that for, yeah. But anyways, it's going to get <laughs> double strike and hit for an absurd amount. More than 40 damage. So your opponents are probably going to be one shot by that from then on out. Speaking of which, we've got Duel's Heritage. Another great way to give double strike and a really good kind of political way to do it. Whenever one or more creatures attack, you may have target attack, creature gain double strike until end of turn. This doesn't specify your creatures. So essentially, hey, if an opponent's about to attack, you're like, you know what? You've got some good creatures out there. I see that. You want to attack, okay? But you see that creature right there? If you swing that creature at someone else, I'll give it double strike so it can hit them even harder. And usually you can make deals like that. Or yeah, just when you're swinging with Withengar, be like, Withengar, hit incredibly hard. Bam. Nice. Next up, we've got Fire Shrieker, just a good equipment to give double strike. And then we've got Brass Knuckles, a weird equipment to give double strike, but one that does work as well. When you cast it, copy it. So you get two of these, and the equipped creature has double strike as long as two or more equipment are attached to it. So yeah, you can just attach both of these if you need to, or if it's already got another equipment attached to it. Cool, there you go. So yeah, I mean, I guess if you've got uh, the Binding Blade attached to something, you just need to attach one of these to like your commander and be like, hey, I'm going to hit you hard for no reason. Cool. Moving on, though, let's talk about tactic number six to protect our plan, which I'm calling Do What I Want. And to start things off, we've got a fantastic card that I'm so happy. It's still budget-friendly. Blacksmith skill. Yeah, to seven cents. A, an incredible card. A single mana target permanent gains hex and destructible until end of turn. It's an artifact creature. It's too. The important thing is, hey, one mana basically protects from nearly anything. hex and indestructible can deal with a lot of things. Next up, Dispel. Also can deal with a lot of things. It is speed. Counter target and spell for a single mana. Yeah, if someone's trying to counter what you're doing, you're like, nope. Or someone's trying to take out your, your secret commander, you know, in speed, you're like, nope. Here we go. Next up, Lauren's Escape. Again, like Blacksmith Skill, a great card. Artifact or creature creates hex for destruction until I turn scry one. This one's important that it does specify artifacts. So an opponent, like, while you're swinging with your commander with, you know, the binding blade attached to it, they're like, I'm going to. Uh, crush contraband, you're there. And then you're like, uh, no, uh, hexproof indestructible on my binding blade. Thank you. Or again, when Withengar is actually flipped, then you're like, yeah, it can protect a creature too. So a great card. Next up, we've got Turn Aside. Again, a great counter spell for just a single mana. Counter target permanent. Counter target permanent. Counter target spell that targets a permanent you control. So very efficient, very effective in a lot of scenarios. Next up, this one's kind of interesting with this deck. Familiar's Ruse. Two blue. Uh, so basically counter spell mana. Instant. Initial cost to cast. Return a creature control to its owner's hand. Counter target spell. So again, this can actually be a good thing. 
with this deck. There's kind of like a downside to it, but it's kind of an upside for this commander because you're like, hey, um, yeah, I'll bounce my commander back to my hand that has a great ETB. Uh, and yeah, being able to utilize it again, maybe to get the Binding Blade out essentially. So yeah, keep that in mind. Next up, we've got Swift of Boots, a great card, obviously. Uh, creature has Hexproof and Haste. This will not help you attack with Withengar right away, obviously, because uh, yeah, Withengar is flipping in combat, but it will help you, you know, attack maybe with a creature that you are attaching that blade to right away. And also it's a good way to protect within Gar as well, or your commander, etc., etc. And then finally, we've got you find the Villain Slayer, a great flexible card for this kind of a deck. Choose one, counter target spell. Nice. Hey, uh, choose the other one, draw two cards, discard two cards, loot two, essentially. Again, a great way to dig down deeper into our deck or counter something. And yeah, maybe ditch the Blinding Blade and get into our Blinding Blade finding blade and get into our graveyard next up though we've got a different kind of tactic with tactic number seven which i'm calling eyes open and uh with this one well we're gonna be blinking things starting with planar incision exile target artifact or creature return to the battlefield on its control they counter on it this one is interesting because well first of all with our commander this can be a great way to utilize that etb again so again if we've got something like this in our hand hey uh we're okay with you know maybe getting you know a pretty big like a dreamstone heat drop potentially into our graveyard with a you know looting effect essentially getting our commander out getting that into play and just kind of you know cheating out the cost of something but also hey then i can reuse it for when i do get the binding blade into my graveyard too or in a desperate situation, you can utilize this to save the Binding Blade or even Withengar. Though, keep in mind, when you do blink Withengar, it will leave and come back into play as the front side. So you need to, you know, re-hit an opponent with that side, essentially. So there you go. Be careful. Know that, you know, that's it's a desperate situation. If someone's going to exile your, you know, your secret commander, save it. Save it in one of, uh, you know, in many ways. Next up, we got to various time twist. Again, very similar thing, essentially, except for you can exile any permanent you control and bring it back. So, again, a great way to save basically any of our things. And then we've got Touch Spirit Realm. This one's actually kind of flexible. Uh, it does have a channel ability, essentially, for one in a white, discard it, exile target creature, return uh, artifact or creature from the battlefield, end step, essentially. So there you go. Again, another way to protect against some key piece, especially your secret commander or, you know, blink your actual commander. Or when it enters the battlefield, you can exile up to one target artifact or creature until it leaves the battlefield. So again, kind of like an oblivion ring type effect, essentially. But yeah, we've got a lot of great ways, you know, to deal with our opponent's things and uh, an entire tactic about that. So let's move on to tactic number eight, which I'm calling stop that. I mean, don't do that. No, I mean, I, I chose stop that, but we'll go with that. Here we go. So we've got Alchemist Retrieval, again, a flexible spell, a single mana to bounce one of our non land permanents back to our hand. So again, a great way to save something or to get our commander's ETB again, or for two mana, we can bounce any opponent's non land permanent. Moving on, Geist Wave. This is two mana all the time, but if we bounce one of our own things, hey, we draw a card. If we don't, we're not drawing a card, but that's okay. Next up, we've got Oblation. This can be an incredible card. I absolutely love this one. The owner of target non-land permanent shovels in her library, then draws two cards. This can basically get rid of anything for the rest of the game. I mean, not our opponent's commanders, because they can choose to put in the command zone. But if our opponent has an incredibly annoying non-land permanent, you're like, yeah, that's well worth uh, you drawing two cards for me just to permanently get rid of that. I mean, there is a chance they redraw it, sure, but the chance is pretty low. So there you go. Or, you know, we can utilize it on one of our own things to save it. So again, if an opponent is trying to exile our secret commander, we can be like, okay, emergency, uh, I'll draw two cards with this because I'm, you know, shuffling my own thing back in my library. So shuffle it back in there. And then you've got plenty of tutors again to get it back out. So keep that in mind. Moving on, Crush Contraband, just a great removal spell. Basically, exile an artifact and an enchantment. Then we've got Divine Reckoning, a great board wipe. Each player chooses a creature they control, destroy the rest, and you can flash it back. Again, hey, this deck is built around um, Withengar. Get Withengar into play. And then just wipe out all the creatures. And your opponents are like, ah, uh, we only have one tiny creature. Don't hit me. And then you're like, yes, demon, go. So yeah, and then you can do it again. Because it's got flashback, right? No, moving on, Aether Gale, a great great bounce spell uh five mana bounce six non-land permanence again you can utilize this for your commander's etb or yeah just wipe out someone's boards so you're like oh you don't have any blockers anymore huh okay <laughs> swinging through next up we've got cleansing nova a flexible board wipe choose one as royal creatures as royal artifacts and shamans so depending on the situation you're in utilize the better effect speaking of which austere command a very flexible board wipe choose two all artifacts enchantments small creatures big creatures whatever you need to do do that and uh yeah just wipe things speaking of wiping things flood of tears hey uh return all non-land permanents back to owner's hands and if you return four or more non-token permanents you put a permanent card in your hand on the battlefield so basically wipe things out if you've got four things cool get back out your commander maybe again which has a great etb maybe you can get you know your binding blade out of your graveyard with that or just cheat binding blade back into play as well Finally, we've got in Garrick's Wake, a massive board wipe. Again, we've got plenty of great ways to ramp with this stack. So nine mana is really not that big of a problem. And yeah, 
Destroy all creatures you don't control in all planes walkers you don't control. Wipe your opponents out and allow your, you know, I mean, either creature, you know, that has the binding blade attached with it, you know, to actually get through, or within guard to get through and wipe out an opponent and then get bigger. <laughs> yeah, just as the game gets, you know, going, you know, get more and more, your your, your secret commander is going to get even more deadly, which is just fun. I mean, I don't even talk about how, like, yeah, if you wipe out two opponents or just have opponents that happen to get wiped out, right? It can be like a 39-39, so gross. And then finally, let's move on to the last tactic, which I'm calling tactic number nine, which I'm calling I'm calling highlighted land. Very, very, very original, right? And tactic number nine, we've got Gyre Reach Sanitarium, a great land that I really want to highlight because, well, hey, I've talked about how looting is good, and this is a land that loots for you. Tap for a colorless, pay two tap, each player draws a card and discards a card. So again, a great way to be like, okay, I can dig deeper into my deck. And also I can get my binding blade into my graveyard if I want to, so I can utilize my commander's ETB for it. So yeah, overall, I absolutely, I, I really like this deck. I hope you do as well. Again, I really like secret commander kind of decks because like, it's just nice to throw your opponents off a little bit. They might think you're going in one direction with a commander. Like, oh yeah, I've seen Shurim the Hegemon. I know exactly what you're doing. And then you're gonna be like, no, no, you don't. Secret commander, activate. Um, and then your friends are going to be like, Why, why'd you say it that way? That's kind of like a Power Ranger or something. I don't know. Anyways, make sure you check out that deck list link in the description below. Yeah, comment below with your thoughts on this deck. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.